Hey, I'm Matt Hudgens, and he's Dave Mulvaney, and this is Profitability MD. Dave, how are you doing today, buddy? Doing great, Matt. How about you? I am doing great. Nice hot summer, you know, something new and different. It is. <laughs> All right, episode 135, increase profits to maximize the value of your company. Increase your profits to maximize the value of your company, right? So we've been doing these things, 10 ways to increase profits, 10 ways to increase your pricing, 10 ways to increase. All this leads to higher profits, which leads to a higher value of your business, right? We can kind of do the outline of that. So why would you want to increase your profits? Number one, because you make more money, right? Because the profits is pretty much what you take home as the business owner, right? That's your profits is what you make. But it also increases the value of your company because when somebody buys your company, they buy that for a multiple of whatever you make. So a multiple of that would be, a typical would be three times whatever you make. So if you make $100,000, I'm gonna pay you three times that, I'm paying you 300,000. But if you made 150,000, because we increased your profits by 50,000, then a buyer would offer you three times that 150,000, which is $450,000. So now you actually made an extra $150,000 in the value of your company. So as you get closer to retirement, as you get closer to exiting your business, it's the profitability of the business that matters because people it, pay you based on the cash flow. And it's not just necessarily, like if, if you're going to, let's say you want to acquire um, a piece of property for your business. So you've been renting for a while and you want to go acquire a what is the bank going to look at? They're going to look at your, your profitability. profitability. And yeah. I think it, I, I want to say it's Dan Kennedy who said, you know, if there is definitely value in being the lowest priced, but there is zero value in being the second lowest price. There's so, <laughs> um, so um, if you can be the lowest price, that's one thing. But then if you can't be the lowest price, then you should then shoot to be the highest, most profitable price in your market. And so the only way to do that, of course, is how do you be the most profitable? Of course, we're going to talk about value. We always talk about value, but you know, you got to be the most profitable in that way. It's not just the highest price, but the most profitable in your sector. That's what you, that's what you want to be as a business, the most profitable that you could be. So we're going to go through some things on how to be more profitable, how to increase your profits, because ultimately that'll help you um, look better to your banker, Look better when it's time to sell, all of those things. So all of the above. Right. So the same kind of things we've been doing. Rate yourself on a scale of one to five, right? So we'd say, how would you rate your current refund policy? And you say, Matt, you're talking about higher profits. What do we care about our refund policy? Well, we've talked about that in the past about a refund policy or your guarantee could go into reducing the risk of somebody doing business with you, right? Could go to uh, making it easier or a no-brainer for somebody to do business with you, right? So how would you rate your current refund policy? You're like, we refund, we don't refund. How do you market that, right? Because again, that's something we've mentioned in the past would be, if you got a money back guarantee, you're reducing the risk, you should play that up, right? So how do you rate that? One of the things that has made Amazon so successful is their refund policy is, is you don't even have to have a reason. And they, they, everything's an automatic refund, almost inevitably, even if you break the dang thing, uh, you can still get a refund. And a lot of Amazon vendors don't like it, but the reality is they make the refund so easy that it takes the fear. People yes. are often afraid to, to buy. So when you can eliminate that fear of, of the purchase because your refund policy is so solid, it, it, it makes people more willing to pay a higher price knowing that no matter what, I'm okay. I either love the product or I'm gonna get my money back easily, no questions asked. Absolutely. All right, number two, how would you rate your ability to consistently offer new products or new services to your current customers? So we're talking about this increasing your profits by selling more stuff to your existing clients, right? So can we find a new product or a new service that we can offer our new, I mean, our existing customers? We've talked about that in the past. That can be a joint venture. That can be you just offering a new product. Hey, now I'm adding this to my product lines, right? Um, that could be you offering a new service because it complements something you're already doing, right? And so how would you rate your ability to consistently do that? Are you consistently offering 
new products and new services to your existing customers. They like you and trust you and they're buying from you. Now, what else can we sell to them to increase our profits, right? Rate yourself on one to five on that. Um, we talk about this all the time because we're direct marketer guys. How would you rate your current marketing and advertising effectiveness on a scale of one to five? Five, it's great, it's awesome. I track it to a T, I know I can put in a dollar and get $5 back. Uh, a zero or a one would be, I have no idea. You know, I put ads in the yellow pages. I run some Google ads. I think they work. I don't really keep track, right? Is the yellow page is still around? I think it is. It might be on, you know, yellowpages.com, but, <laughs> but you're exactly right. So you and I talk about this all the time. You want to know how good your marketing or advertising is. How effective is it? You got to keep track. Where did you hear about us? Where did the, where did you get our number from, right? You need to keep track from where your new clients come from, where your prospects come from. And that's a way to measure the effectiveness of your advertising and your marketing. Because if it isn't, you know, I've got a guy right now who's spending 8,000 a month on an infomercial in, down in Florida. He's doing really good in revenue, but he doesn't know the exact one-to-one -one match, how many people came from the infomercial and how many came from just other referrals. He doesn't track the difference, right? And sometimes that is just changing the offer. Yes. So that you know it, that it bar none came from that infomercial. I mean, yes. it, the offer has to be unique enough so that you know it came from, you know, like like we talk about the my pillow guy on occasion. He's yeah. always got a unique offer so he can tell exactly what commercial it came from. And yep. so the offer has to be unique so that you, so it becomes measurable because spending 8,000 a month. Now, granted, it may be bringing in so much money that he's, a lot of times that's uh, the, the, the opposite of what you think is happening. A lot of times people aren't tracking because it's working so well, they're not, why should I track it? It's working right. so well. But right. the reality is by tracking it, you can know what's working best and yes. then you can throw money and get rid of the things that aren't bringing the money. Exactly. Right. What's working, what isn't working. Let's tweak what's working and make it work better. I mean, all those things to know, but we have to know it. We have to measure it. You and I've talked about that several times. Know your numbers. So we're talking about knowing your marketing numbers, knowing your marketing spend and the results. All right. How would you rate your current website's ability to generate revenue? So scale of one to five is your website generating revenue or generating opportunities, right? And so we've talked about that several times. Most people's website is almost like a glorified business card. Hey, we've been in business. Remember we talked about that. The, the, we've been in business for 25 years. We're family owned and we're super friendly and you can trust us, right? But that doesn't follow the formula. We're interrupt, engage, educate, and offer, right? How are you interrupting? How are you educating them? What is your offer that you're making to these people on your website, right? How can you convert somebody? Truthfully, people go over there and they are checking you out. Hey, I've never heard of this guy. Let me go check his website out. But then once they're there, you need to have an ability to generate some revenue or generate a lead, right? It's at least generate a lead. You and I talk about lead magnets all the time, right? Should be able to generate a lead, right? The website is, so whatever you did to, to push that traffic to that website, whatever you did, whether that was, they heard your name, they truck drove down the road, doesn't matter. That person is going to be at your website. And if you do not capture their information, you may never get another opportunity. So somehow you've got to get their name and email address and you want to do that on a big scale. That is the goal of a website. And too many yes. people make a website too complex. Like you said, you want to interrupt their pattern, engage them, and then exchange information. I'll give you this. That's what the lead magnet is for. It's, right. it's to create an exchange. I give you this and you give me your, your information so that now I can build a relationship with you so that maybe in the future, either A, you're gonna buy from me or you're gonna opt out of my communications because you're not my ideal customer. But, it, but if I don't capture your information, I'm screwed because I may never get another chance. And, and too many people have a website that doesn't give you the opportunity to capture their information on the first visit. You've gotta have something there for them to get it. This is an interesting one, and we never really think about this too much, but how would you rate your ability to barter, to barter, to trade in order to obtain products or services to operate your business? So, so could you barter with somebody, some of your service or some of your offerings or some of your products to get something that would help you run your business better, right? Um, 
I don't know, copiers, uh, phone systems? What can you barter as opposed to having to purchase, right? Well, because, this, go ahead. No, I was going to say, because the, when it comes into like, when you offer something, okay, so I'm a big golfer. And so a lot of times you play in these golf events, they give you shop credit, you know, hundred bucks, you get a hundred bucks shop credit, but you know, the shop is making 25 to 50% on that golf shirt, right? So I use the hundred dollar credit to buy a hundred dollar golf shirt that really only costs the shop actually less than that 40 bucks, yeah. right? So they gave me a hundred dollar credit, but it only cost them 40 bucks. That's why we talk about bartering would be, you could offer a hundred dollars of services. So you could get a hundred dollars of, you'd have to go buy a hundred dollar phone system, a hundred dollar, whatever, uh, new printer, new printer cartridges, but he's got profit margins over there as well. Right. So, so he'd probably be willing to trade you something for yours. It's just another way to think outside the box. How would you uh, rate your ability to barter with somebody? You got any bartering yeah. examples? Well, yes, I was going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to use Russell Brunson as an example. I, when he started his company, um, which is uh, Edison uh, LLC, um, but it's ClickFunnels, you know, he talked about how he didn't have the money to hire somebody. He, he knew he wanted to launch a software company, but he didn't have the money, but he, he was a fairly good copywriter. And so he actually he made an exchange. He bartered with a guy who could write the software. He built his whole company around this bartering idea. I don't have the money. I'll provide you this service if you'll provide me that service. And, and he bartered to build his company. So it, this, we're not just talking about barter with your customers. You know, a lot of times you start a business and you think, how, do I, how can I learn how to do this? Instead of thinking, who could do that, which we always say who, not how, yeah, but yeah. who could do this and how could I barter with them if I don't have the money to hire them, but I know I need to hire them. What, how can I put myself in a position to barter with them to get what I need accomplished done so that I can continue to grow my company to be more profitable. And so this goes into not just with barter with your customers, consider bartering with if you're early in your business or you're trying to grow your business, sometimes you don't have the money to grow, consider bartering because it's a great way to grow your business. And sometimes that means you have to barter with a portion of your company. Um, it, it, people do it all the time, but if you need to accomplish something, you don't have the knowledge who, not how. So yeah, that's perfect. How would you rate your ability to consistently increase your customer satisfaction level? So we've talked about that a lot, you know, the wow experience. How good are you are creating a wow experience? How good are you are creating little add-ons, little value add-ins that we've talked about several times in the past that increases the customer satisfaction level? Um, we've talked about that just every little bit that you, how do I say, every interaction you have with a customer is a chance to wow them, a chance to impress them. And the more often you do that and the more consistently you do that, the higher regard they have, the higher satisfaction level they have, right? And the higher satisfaction leads to the next question, which, which how is your rate your ability to convince your customers to refer others to you, right? So, so they're very much related. If you generate a wow experience that they're impressed, that you're, 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 you're exceeding expectations consistently, that increases your ability to get referrals from those existing clients, existing customers, right? Yeah, and, and ultimately you can, everybody can think of, when you have a have one of those experiences, it's the same thing. I mean, we've said this before. It's like when you go to a movie and you love the movie, you tell everybody. It's natural. <laughs> it's a natural human response when you have a wow experience, whether it's a wow experience buying an automobile, whether it's a wow experience with a service technician. I mean, look, I can tell you that you know I've had people, service technicians, go the extra extra mile, and when it happens, you're like, you know what? I'm going to tell your boss how pleased I was, but yes. I'm also going to tell somebody else because it's like, look, this guy did that or this person did that for like just out of the kindness of their heart. Companies have been built on this whole concept of, look, if you'll go the extra mile, uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, this, is what, this is one of 12 traits of, of very successful people is that when you go the extra mile, regardless of whether you're being paid for it or not, the customers, it always comes back to you. And it comes back to you because customers naturally will tell others. And that's 
I mean, that's ultimately what you want. You don't want to make it seem like it. Look, it's it's intentional. This is something. Yes. This is yes. a discipline. You discipline yourself. It's a discipline. To go the extra mile. So. And I think we talked about that. What is it? Is it Chick Fil A that they always say thank you at the end? You know, or, or I think that's what they say. They say something like thank you at the end of every order, and you know, it's just nice and pleasant, right? And and that, but but whatever it is, I think it's thank you. Uh, or thanks for coming in, or thanks for letting us service you. It was something to that effect. But it is a line that every Chick-fil-A employee says when you finish paying, whether it be the drive-through or or in the, and that creates the wow experience, makes you feel warm and fuzzy, right? I just had, I've had shoulder trouble all year. And so I've been going to a physical therapist and then uh, a dry needling lady. I went to this uh, lady who sticks the dry needles to kind of get the muscles to relax. Talk about a wow experience. Not only did she solve my problem, it's just a very pleasant and engaging experience right to you know you think putting needles in your back would hurt and all no it doesn't hurt at all it's actually kind of neat and man the relief you feel afterwards it's it's like a miracle right <laughs> create a wow experience and 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 what am i doing i'm generating referrals to all my golf buddies oh your your back hurts oh i got the physical therapist and the dry needle lady you're gonna love right because solve my problems it's a wow experience why wouldn't i want to who wouldn't I refer to? Somebody like that was like dirty and sticky, right? <laughs> you gotta go over there and you don't want to lay on the table and 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 get the needles because the table's all sticky or something, right? That wouldn't be a wow experience, right? This is like soothing music. And- it might be a wow experience, but wow, I'm never going back there again. <laughs> that's a wrong that's wow exactly, experience. That's exactly right. But that that's a great example. All right, another one. How would you rate your ability to market what you sell online? We've talked about that. Your website, are you using your website? Could you sell your products or services online and and not everything you know we talk about your dog food business that is an online business right and that's fantastic if you're brick and mortar can you move to online right if you're a product or service can you at least get something sold online you and i talk about this all the time the go ahead well i was going to say when when i had my electrical business uh our products had to be sold in people's businesses so um, but the way we did that is we, I mean, we had a specific process of attracting distributors and helping them build a sales force. So our website was, was about our products, but it was geared toward attracting distributors. The whole website was built around that model. So the, you know, our ability to sell online was dependent on us selling in direct sales, but the only way for us to be effective in direct sales was we had to constantly attract great distributors. So knowing your market, if you are in direct sales, how do you, how do you go after that and create your ability to sell through your website in such a way that it, it matches your business model, even if you right. are in direct sales? I mean, that, that's, I don't care if you sell Kirby's or, or cars, no, it's exactly. It's funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking of an example. I worked with a company before and, and it's a very uh, personable sales. So, so the initial sales are, are hands on, but then they started adding the, the, the reorder online. So you could reorder the product online by yourself. I would get a notification that you reordered it, but you didn't have to call me and track me down and say, hey, Matt, we need another, you know, another truckload of XYZ, right? You can go in there and click on a button and, and redo the reorder yourself right? Because I've already got you in the system. I've already sold you, right? So it could just be as simple as if you're selling something, maybe make it so it's just, it, but it's a personal sales, but there's a reorder. There's ability to reorder the same product. Contacts, 1-800-CONTACTS does this. I just got an email today, right? Hey, is it time for you to re- renew your contacts, right? Because they've already got my uh, a prescription in there, right? I got my contacts, whatever, a year ago, however many, 11 months ago, whatever. So the prescription is still good. You know, I guess they're good for a year. So I could just go in there and click and reorder my same prescription. Technically, you're supposed to go to an eye doctor every year, yada, yada, all that kind of stuff. I'm just using this as an example that I just got an email today from uh, 1-800-CONTACTS. Hey, do you want to reorder your contacts? Gosh, I wouldn't even have to talk to a salesperson. I wouldn't have to talk to an eye doctor. I would just go in there. My stuff's on file, and I would just press reorder. Pretty cool. That's an easy way to get some money out of it. Easy way. And they sell online and they don't even have to come back to, I mean, you're, it's easy. It's done. They already have all your info and just click here, make it easy yeah. to sell online for your customers to buy from you online. Yeah, so. Exactly. Right. All right. How would you rate your ability to package your sales process and license it to others 
your competitors. So package your sales price process and sell it to others. So I was talking with one of my financial advisor guys and he's got a sales process. Here's what the, the first meeting looks like. Here's the second meeting, third meeting. He has a four meeting process. Here are the deliverables. Here's what I'm, uh, here are the questions that I'm asking. Here's what I'm giving the prospect. It's his process for how he brings on a new client, right? And the second part of that is actually what they call the onboarding. Once they've signed the documents, what's the onboarding process look like over the next six weeks, okay? So that is a package that he could sell to other financial advisors. Here's how I get new business. Here's how I close new business. And then here's how I make them feel wow or wonderful because my first six weeks, we touch them, you know, six times, right? That's a process that's working for him that he might be able to sell to other financial advisors, right? And this has been done in almost every business. Almost every business, So right? you think of uh, Keller Williams. I can't think of his first name, uh, Keller. Yeah, Gary uh, Keller, yeah. Gary Keller. Uh, I, and I've read a lot of his books. That's what Gary got really good at, sales processes, and then he would sell it to other people. Then I think yes. of Joe Girardi, who's the guy who sold like a – the more cars than anyone. He called himself the greatest car salesman in the world uh, because his process for selling was so unique that people paid him massive amounts of money. And you know what his process for selling was? We follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. <laughs> we talk about that a million times. I mean, we talk about follow up, but that was Joe Girardi. So it can be done with cars. It can be done in, in real estate. It can be done in financial services. Any business, that if you if you have a unique selling process that works, can be sold to your competition and and you're well if i sell it to my competition well what happens to me if everybody has to say look you're still unique that's the, the people buy from you because of you not because of all your processes they buy from because of you so well and it can be like so so i have a client communication system where where, where every month you know they get uh different types of emails so they get three different emails from me and a phone call right so in my business it's three emails and a phone call. That's a system, a process, I call it my climate communication process that you could package up and sell it to another, right? Newsletters, right? So then again, I'm in the financial services business over here that Morningstar produces a monthly newsletter that you could buy and that's what you would send and put your pretty face on it. You would send that to your clients just to keep in touch with them, send to your centers of influence, but you didn't create the newsletter. So newsletter, newsletter services are a great example of that, how you can, so whatever you do for your clients, you could probably package it and sell to somebody else to do for their clients. Actually, newsletter is a great example, right? So whatever business you're in, what are you doing to stay in touch with your clients? Emails, email newsletters, campaigns. Remember we talked about the campaign calendar, right? That, that, that every month there's a crazy reason that you could have a, it's, it's cat month. So therefore we got, you know, a sale on whatever, cat houses, uh, you know, cat litter boxes, cat toys. Next month, it's dog month. Hey, it's dog month. We got, hey, it's, it's you know, uh, love your uh, secretary month. I, I don't know. But every month, there's an excuse that you could have a, a sale or an event, right? You can share that process, right? There's a, there's a, uh, there was a marketing firm who actually did that. That's a, they had a sales of the month club, right? And that was every month, here's our sales and here was our sales letter and you can buy their whole package and then stuff your product inside of there, right? Whatever you're selling. Anyway, anything you do for your clients or customers to service them, to get them, to stay in touch with them is something somebody else would probably like or appreciate. And in reverse of that, I would tell you, you could probably buy it from somebody else as well. Yeah. Right. And, and, and tweak it yourself and then sell the new product as because you've improved it. Right. Yeah. And the reality is most most of the time, the value of your business is these processes that we're talking about as how well they're documented. Well, that's why people sell them because most business owners don't consider the processes that it takes. Like you have a process, it might be in your head, but <laughs> laying them out sometimes is what people are, are the reason they buy from you, but it's also the reason uh, others might want to know your process. Yeah. Well, well, I just came to it. So there's a company, so investment advisor business, uh, registered investment advisor is called RIA. And it's called RIA in a box. And so it is the compliance that's necessary. And every month they send you an email that this is the compliance that you, so they spread out whatever you're supposed to do over 
a 12 month period and every month you're doing a little bit of compliance every month. There's a financial planning firm that works with dentists. They've taken the financial planning process and broken it down into 12 steps. And every month they do one of the steps, you know, gather the data, check your 401k, you know, check how much debt you have and the interest rates on your credit card. Each one of those is an activity that you do once a month. Well, right? you know, it's funny, even in the medical world. So right. when, uh, when they were trying to come up with a, an AIDS cure, uh, yeah. I was reading about this a, a, a while back and um, what, and I can't think of the doctor's name right now, but what he figured out was he, he, he assumed they'll never find a single medication that's going to cure AIDS. Okay. So because of his assumption, what he decided to do is to start mixing different types of medicines to see if he could find <laughs> a formula where they could work together. And sure enough, he did where his, he was intensively tracking all of his patients and the success rate and how long they lived and all of that. And he found this formula. And it, of course, he found the formula. So guess what it did to him as a doctor? It put him on stages speaking yeah. all around the world. He get paid a lot of money to, to speak because all he did is he figured out a process to treat something that was very complex to treat. He didn't cure it, but he was able to treat it and give people a longer life and all these things. by So he created a process and then he sold the process. It's a perfect example. I don't That's care great. what field you're in. If you create a process and you can sell the process, other people are going to want to use it regardless of the field you're in. And regardless. And this last one, how would you rate your ability to consistently create new products and new services that would appeal to your current customers? Right. So, so always ask yourself, what else could I do for them? What else could I, what else can I wow them with? What else can I solve, sell to them? What else can I solve them for them? What else can I bring to them that would add value to their lives? I've mentioned this before. I've got a marketing company and they have a product of the quarter. Right. So they go to all their suppliers and they say, OK, what's the hottest trade show item? Right. And so the suppliers are selling it to all the marketing guys. So they could say, oh, you know, it's what we're selling a lot of is this product right here. And we've switched it where we take that product and we proactively introduce that to our existing client base and say, hey, Dave, you know, here's the product of the quarter. It's a really cool pen that has a light on it and da 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 da. Other guys have been really using this at their trade shows and it's been really you know, well received. And so I'm bringing you the idea. I didn't generate the idea almost like you just talked about. I just asked my suppliers, hey, what's your hottest product of the quarter, the best selling product of the quarter? What are other guys using at their trade shows? Now I'm using it proactively though, instead of you have no idea what the hottest product of the quarter is as my customer. So now I'm offering you a service that says, hey, I have found the hottest and best product that you can offer a year and I'll teach you how to use it. Here's how you use it at the trade show. And what's important about this is it's the, you, how, what, you know, consistently create new products yes. that would appeal to your customers. It doesn't necessarily mean these are products you sell to your customers. Now right. um, I've uh, like, when you get like tchotchkes, you go to a trade show, you get tchotchkes. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, but sometimes you have, uh, um, vendors i have vendors who will send me really cool tchotchkes like one of them is uh um like this okay this is a you know oh, it's a nice yeah yeah a really nice you know journal um yeah. which is awesome okay and the person who sent me that i i mean i know who sent me that okay and yeah. this is the third one he sent to me and i've used the other two and so i remember that but uh, you know, the, those uh, coffee mugs that keep your coffee, you know, yeah. sometimes just sending a really nice uh, gift to your, to your clients is the thing that keeps like, cause like you're in the financial services business, maybe you can't come up with a new product, but you can come up with a product that is <laughs> to appeal to your customer. And that's what makes them happy and keeps doing business with you. There's a whole guy, it's funny you say that, that's, it's called Giftology, Giftology. And it's a book the guy wrote, and now it's a business. So, so it was specifically made for financial advisors, but it's anybody who's, who's customer service. And it's, it's, we will help you come up with Giftology, giving uh, creative gifts to your clients and your prospects makes you memorable. And, and we'll help you put together a program that works for you. 
whether that means you send something once a month or whether that means you send something twice a year, right? Or I've got one of my guys doing this exactly that, you know, guy wrote the book, Giftology, great creative stuff that's useful, right? But then the coaching is, we'll help you customize it for your business. And what he's doing is twice a year and he rotates who the clients are. So he's not sending it to every client, right? He's sending it to 10 clients here and then 10 clients here. And then it's a different 10 clients every time. He's sending stuff out twice a year, but they're to different clients and they're different products, different and, gifts. And, and does it work? I mean, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I, I want to show you how well it works. Okay. So this pen I got uh, years yeah. ago from this guy, Herb Gartner and Herb yeah. was my advertising agent. And I was probably at the time spending 15,000 a month on ads, uh, radio yeah. and television. And Herb got me this pen. It's about a hundred and, you know, a hundred and some odd dollar pen. Okay. It's still on my desk. Okay. <laughs> so does it work? And then um, my Lexus pen. Okay. When I bought a Lexus, Don Hacker, my, who I've bought now three Lexus from, uh, Don, you know, gives me and my wife one of these pens. Of course, I confiscated both of them, but uh, <laughs> these are really cool pens and they're expensive pens. Now, some people don't care about pens, but some people do. So these, if you notice, I mean, did this, did, did this sell me a new car? Yeah, it got me a couple more cars, perhaps. I don't know, but I can tell you that these things, I reached over to my briefcase because that Lexus pen is always in my briefcase. This one's always on my desk. When you get nice gifts from, from your vendors, people remember you if it's a nice enough gift. And so I know we got off on, this is creating products, but that yeah. would appeal to your customers. So it's yeah. not always you creating new products to sell to them. It can be the giftology where you're right. just gifting people and staying fresh on their mind. And that's, yeah. what does it do? It allows you to sell at a higher price so you can be more profitable. If, I mean, the, the people who like you, they're not going to say, hey, Matt, what's I, what's the lowest price I can get on it? That's, that's not going to come to mind. Hey, Matt, I need to add this to my uh, portfolio. Can, you know, is that something we can do? The price, the price conversation never comes up when somebody is, they really like to in business with you. And that's the goal of, of being profitable is to get your clients to like doing business with you and you like doing business with them. Oh, absolutely. So we'll bring this full circle in episode 135, increase profits to maximize the value of your business. You want, you're in business to create profits. You're in business to create profits. The more profits you create, the more money you make, right? The money you make as a business owner is the profits, right? You pay yourself a salary plus the profit distributions, right? That profit actually increases the value of your company because somebody is going to pay you a multiple of that. So every time you increase the profits, you actually increase the value of your company because someone's going to pay you for the future cash flows. We were going through 10 different ways to rate yourself on how good at you are increasing the profitability of your own business. Can you do some bartering? We're trying to get you to think outside the box. Can you increase your customer satisfaction level? Can you increase your referrals, right? All these lead to higher profitability for you as a business owner, for you as a business. So this is the kind of stuff we talk about in our mastermind group, right? We have a mastermind group that you and I run with business owners, like-minded business owners. And we're always talking about ideas to increase the profitability of our business. What are little things? We call it the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of your actions are 80% of your results. What are the things that we can do to increase the profitability of our firm, right? That's what we talk about in our mastermind group. If you're interested in that, reach out to us, Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. Our irresistible offer right now is we can find any business owner $50,000, $75,000, $100,000 without spending a dollar more on advertising and marketing. We call that a profit acceleration session. How do we do that? We do that because we've been doing this for so many years, and these are the 10 things we're going to tell you to look at. We've been, our, our series of podcasts, these are the things, the checklists. We know people aren't good at bartering. We know people aren't good at joint ventures. We, aren't, we know people aren't good at follow-up, Right. We know that the little bit of the business fundamentals, which apply to almost every business, can lead to dramatic results, $50,000, $75,000, $100,000 to your bottom line, to your profits, right? That's what we call a profit acceleration software. If you want to do that, reach out to Matt at ProfitabilityMD.com, Dave at ProfitabilityMD.com. This podcast is ProfitabilityMD.com, and it's available anywhere you get podcasts. And we have a YouTube channel, ProfitabilityMD, so you can watch us and our beautiful faces on video. 
in case you're a video guy, I like to watch stuff at two times speed. I like to listen to stuff at two times speed. But anyway, this is what Dave and I love to do. We got a, a mastermind group, a coaching group, however you want to call that. And we've got our profit acceleration session where we can find anybody $50,000, $75,000, dollars Anyway, this is love. This is this is what we love to do. Dave, this is a good one. How to increase your profits to maximize the value of your business. Good stuff, man. Good stuff, man. Have a great day. Take care. All right, man. See you. All right, bye.